over the course of the past few weeks, the way that the Yom and Tovim have worked out this week, I know that, you know, first of all, just finding places to go, we've had Rosh Hashanah, and then Shabbos, Yom Kippur, and then Shabbos, and Sukkot, and Shabbos, and Shemitah, there. It, there's been a lot of Yom Tov, let's just say. A lot going on. So in just a few days, just two days, tomorrow night, we'll begin Shemini Atzeres. And I know that like many of you, some of us are saying to ourselves, oh my gosh, another Yom Tov. We had Rosh Hashanah, we had Yom Kippur, we had Sukkot, we had Chol Another one? So what I want to try to do tonight, as we're approaching Shemini Atzeret in just a few days, is exactly that. Why do we need another holiday after this very long Chag season? What is significant? What can we get out of Shemini Atzeret? So ready, guys? This is how it's going to work. I'm going to go through two different, two, two concepts of Shemini Atzeret, and then we'll link them together at the end to a, a full picture. Here we go. First of all, again, Shmini Atzeret, it's kind of a funny Chag. On the one hand, it's a separate holiday. For those of you who like candles, you know that in the Hadlakat Neirot of Shmini Atzeret, we always make a Shechiyanu. Because Shmini Atzeret is to some extent a separate holiday. It's its own thing. There are seven days of circus here in Israel, and then Shmini Atzeret. But on the other hand, let's be honest, it's called the eighth day. So it's kind of linked to Sukkot as well. So what is it? So ready. Here we go. I want to first say something about Sukkot before we segue into Shemini Yatzer. Here we go. First of all, I'm sure you've heard glimpse of this and you have a general idea of it, but I want to put together a theme for Sukkot. There's no question that Sukkot has a very universal theme. The whole world coming together. I'm going to prove this now. Four proofs. Four proofs that Sukkot as a whole, in terms of the Chagim, of terms of our holidays, is the most universal holiday. Number one, first of all, let's just talk about the, the general theme of Sukkot. The main theme, if I had to ask the main theme, you'd probably say the idea is we leave our homes, we leave our beautiful, set, rigid homes, and we go out and live in a temporary dwelling in the sukkah because that teaches us that, you know, we, we need to rely on Hashem. It teaches us that everything is not ours. It, these are very general, universal themes. Again, the idea that we go out into the outside world and we just rely on Hashem so number one, that very main theme of Sukkot is very universal. I mean, if we think about it, Pesach is a very Jewish holiday. You know, we're talking about Yitzhak Mitzrayim. Shavuot is about Matan Torah. But Sukkot, the theme of Sukkot, of leaving our homes and go to live, going out and relying on Hashem, that's universal. So that's number one. Second proof, take a look on the sheets you've got. It says in Zechariah, a Pasuk, that we are living right now. This is such an exciting thing, because this Pasuk in Zechariah is talking about Acharit Hayamin, the end of days. And we right now are living through this as it is. It says in Zechariah, Zechariah is talking about the future. What will happen? And he writes as follows. V'haya kol hanotar mikol agoyim haba'im al Yerushalayim All of the nations who are remaining after, again, Mashiach comes, war, and everything is peaceful, watch what it says. They will come every year It says here something that's so interesting. That all year, excuse me, that once a year, the non-Jews, we know we have Aliyah Regel to Yerushalayim, three Regalim. But the non-Jews as well are going to come to Yerushalayim once a year during Chag Sukkot, and they will also come to Daven to Hashem on Sukkot. In fact, by the way, I don't know if any of you have heard of this, if you've been around Yerushalayim. So every year in Yerushalayim on Chag Sukkot, there is a huge Christian group that comes to Yerushalayim on Sukkot 
I had the Jerusalem Post. I just got this from last year's Jerusalem Post. Last year, there were thousands of Christian pilgrims who came from over 80 countries on Sukkot to Yerushalayim. And they were dancing up anywhere. Everywhere. And wow, it's amazing that the Nevuah of Zechariah, that Sukkot is a holiday for everyone, for non-Jews, that all are going to come to Eretz Yisrael, that everyone's going to come to Yerushalayim. Right now, in 2012, we are really experiencing this. All of the, again, the whole world on Chag Sukkot. So again, second proof, this Nevuah of Zechariah, backed up by our experience right now, that Sukkot is a universal holiday. Number three, here we go. We know on Sukkot, we take the Arba Minim, the Etro, the Lulav, the Hadas, and the Aravot, and we shake the Arba Minim together. But we're also aware, I'm sure you all know, this is a famous thing. We're taught this in elementary school. Famous story about, famous Midrash, about what the Arba Minim represent, that they represent all different types of people. Let's take a look at the next source. The Rabbeinu Bechai on Shemot says as follows. Umitamzeh, and again, I'm sure you've all heard this. Nitztavenu b'mitzvah lulav likach arba minim. We take the four minim. Ba'agudacha, united. V'latet arava she'ein lo tam v'reach. We know the aravot have no taste and they have no smell. Remez l'rish e Yisrael. It's a remez to rishayim, to people who don't do Torah and mitzvot. B'chlal ha'etrog, and you take it along with the etrog, which has a good taste and has a good smell. And that's like tzaddikim. And the hadasim and the lulav are like sort of benonim, people in between. Let's put this together. The arva minim, the hadas, the lulav, the etrog, and the arava, they represent all different types of people coming together on Sukkot united. So again, what we see in Sukkot is this theme of universalism of the whole world coming together as one on Sukkot to worship Hashem. And finally, number four, and this is the most striking, and it's a little confusing. Sukkot has a very interesting group of korbanot for the Chag. A very strange pattern. There are on Sukkot, every day, a different number of parim, of cows, were sacrificed as the korban musaf. On the first day of Sukkot, they gave 13. On the second day of Sukkot, they would give 12. Third day, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. Going down once. Very strange pattern. Why from 13 to 7? What are these numbers about? So ready. The Bemid Bar Rabbah, the Medrash Rabbah says that if you add up all these numbers, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, you get, anyone? You get the number 70. 70. And why the number 70? So I'm sure you all know 70 is one of those big numbers in Judaism. 70 represents Umot Ha'olam, the nations of the world. Let's take a look at the next source. It says in the Medrash in Bemid Bar Rabbah, we find that on Sukkot, we are giving korbanot for all the nations of the world. All shivim umot. All of them, we are davening for them on Sukkot. We are giving korbanot for them on this chag. Let's keep going. Amru Yisrael, the Jews say, Ribona olamim, Hashem, we are sacrificing for them in, in, this, in the zechut, in the merit of all the different nations of the world. We are giving shivim parim for them. And therefore they should love us for that. Da, da, da. Well, Medrash continues, but not for us now. So again, let's put these four things together. The idea of the Chag of Sukkot a major theme of Sukkot is the whole world, a universal theme of everyone coming together for Avodat Hashem. We saw that in the Pasuk in Zechariah. We see it with the Dalit Minim. 
We see it with the korbanot of the Chag, the sacrifices of the holiday. And of course, we just see it with the general theme of the holiday. That again, Sukkot is there to teach us that we all rely on Hashem. And again, we do all rely on Hashem. That's something not for the Jews of the world. It's something for everyone. All right. What about Shemini Atzeret? What does that have to do with it? So let's go to the next source, the Psukim about Shemini Atzeret. These Psukim are from Sefer Bamidbar, where it discusses the Chag. When you read Davin Musaf on Monday, we're going to say these Psukim in Musaf. And suddenly, the theme changes completely. And it says as follows. On Again, on Shemini Atzeret, don't do Malacha. How many cows do we give on Shemini Atzeret? Now again, on Sukkot we went 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. So you're ready? What should come after 7? 6. 6. No. Gong. Not true. What happens after 7? How many? 1. It goes straight down from 7 to 1. Okay. Change in the pattern. What's going on? Why does it change from seven and suddenly, abrupt change, jumps straight down to one? What's going on? So ready? Here we go. Famous Medrash. I'm sure you've seen it in Rashi. Very famous. It says as follows in the Bamidbar Rabbah. Skip the Rashi. We'll go straight to the Medrash. Mashal lemelech shasa suda shivayamim. It is a parable to a king who made a seuda for seven days and invited all the people in the country to Shivat Yemei Amishteh. He invited the whole nation. Kevan she'avru Shivat Yemei Amishteh. When the seven days of the party pass, Amar Oavo, he says to his beloved, he says to the person he's closest with, Kfar Yatsanu Yedeinu Mikol Bnei Amdida. We had a party. We invited the whole country, all the citizens. But let's you and I have a little private party afterwards, a little after party. And you know what says the Medrash? The king says to his beloved, we don't need to have a fancy dinner. We don't need to have expensive food. Litra basar, a little meat, a little fish, maybe some vegetables. That's all we need. We don't need to have more than that. So what it's telling us, what is that one par, that one cow on Shmini Yatzera represent? Jews. It represents more than that. <laughs> it represents our special relationship to Hashem. Sukkis is for everybody. And it was a big chag. And it was huge. But afterwards, Hashem says, let's have a private party. A quiet party. Doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be anything special. But, and here's the point, it's not just for the Jews. It's about going back to normal. I'm sure after the Chagim, and again, we've had so many events and this and that, everyone, I am certainly anxious to get back to normal to teach, to learn, kids go to school, back to the regular program. And Shemini Atzeret represents just that. Sukkis is about the whole world coming together. Everyone is coming to Yerushalayim on Sukkot. And Shemini Atzeret is about the day after. And Hashem says, let's just have a private party, a quiet party. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It doesn't have to be anything special. Just you and I, says Hashem, together on Shemini Yatzeret. So that again is the first theme of Shemini Yatzeret, returning back to our private, special, but normal relationship to Hashem. That after the, all the excitement of all the Chagim, that we should come back together again on this special day. Now, that's theme one. A lot of that I'm sure you've heard about, I'm sure you've thought about, you know, you've learned that. I want to show you another medrash 
that I'm pretty sure that no one has ever heard before. And is really, I, when I first saw this Midrash, it blew me away. It's so beautiful, it's so deep, it's so special that it will definitely put you in awe. Here we go. Ready, ladies. It says in the Psikta de Rabbi Kahana as follows. I'm a Rabbi Levi. Bechol chodesh v'chodesh shebekayitz. When Hashem took us out of Mitzrayim, he had an idea. He said, every month, I want to make a party. I want you to have a holiday every month. Bechol chodesh v'chodesh shebekayitz. Bikei shekadosh baruch hu. Litain li Yisrael mo'ed. I want you to have a party every month. Ready, here we go. Ready. B'Nisan. They come out of Mitzrayim in Nisan. Natan lahem Pesach. Beautiful, they got Pesach. B'Iyar. Natan lahem Pesach katan. Pesach sheni. We know the people who were tame on the first Pesach. They had a separate opportunity, a second opportunity on Pesach sheni to celebrate. Besivan natan lahem atzeret. Sivan, third month, they get Shavuot. The third holiday, great, everything's going great. Every holiday, every month, we've got a Chag. And now comes the bump in the road. Betamuz, hayabedat holy ten lahem moed gadol. In Tamuz, fourth month, Hashem, again, they got the Torah, and he says, okay, we're getting ready for a new Chag in Tamuz. And what happened? The Asula Hemeta Egel. They made the Egel Hazaha. Ubitel Tamuz Av Elo. There were supposed to be Chagim in Tamuz Av and Elo all through the summer. But because of Cheta Egel, those three holidays were canceled. Ready. Ba Tishrei. Tishrei comes along. Uparalahem. What happens? We know that in Tishrei, after Cheda Egel, Bnei Yisrael are finally forgiven. So says the Medrash that in Tishrei, they got three makeup holidays. We missed our holidays in Tammuz Avanello. So it says we got payback. Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot. Those three holidays, says the Midrash, were payback for the missed holidays of Tammuz Avanel. Ready, here's the punchline now. Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu. God said, though, after that, La'acherim hu porea v'shaloi no notel. Tishrei, I put three holidays in Tishrei. Those were the makeup holidays. Those were to recreate, that was to payback for those three mid- missed months. But what about Tishrei itself? It needs its own holiday. Natan lo yoma. So Hashem made a separate holiday in Tishrei for Tishrei. Bayom HaShmini Atzeret Yelachem. On the eighth day, Shmini Atzeret. What does this mean? Ready. I want to tell you a story. Many times, actually I want to tell you, what was this? I'm going to tell you a story about a family. Real story, but I'll disguise it a lot. Real story about a family. Two couples who live in a neighborhood, and they're very good friends. They're very close. They eat at each other's houses for Shabbos. They go on vacations together. Their kids are friends. They go to the same schools. They go to the same shuls. They hang out together. They spend a lot of time together. They're old friends. One day, something happens, and one of the couples, in public, for whatever reason, gets angry at the other one and insults them terribly in public. This is a true story, by the way. Terribly insults them. You know, in in the most harsh, inappropriate terms. The insulted couple is shocked. They, they, they hear what they're upset, they know it's not justified, and they're furious. And instantly, in that whole social grouping, there's like a break. The two couples are not friends anymore. They don't hang out with each other anymore. And it really is a little bit like uncomfortable for the whole, you know, that whole chevra. You know, you have a fight between couple A and couple B. 
They don't hang out anymore. You know, now in every, like, simcha, you have to seat them separately. And the fight continued for a, almost a year. And it was very tense, very unpleasant. After the year, approximately a year, the insulting couple, again, the couple who had got angry, realizes that they messed up. That for whatever reason, they had sacrificed a decades-long friendship for being angry over some shtuyot, over nonsense. And they go to the couple that they insulted and they apologize profusely. We were wrong. We shouldn't have done it. And you know, they realize that it was totally unjustified. They made a mistake. And the insulted couple forgives them. They're good people. They say, we understand. You made a mistake. Everything's good. But it's not. And let's explain. Sometimes, not always, sometimes someone hurts you. And it happens in life. And sometimes we can forgive them. We should forgive them. We should always put in every effort to be mochel, to not hold a grudge. You know, we say Kriyat Shema every night. We should forgive everyone who's hurting me. We don't want anyone to be punished because of me. But sometimes we forgive someone, but there's still, there's still an effect. You know, that couple who insulted, the first couple who insulted the second couple, they forgave them. Everyone's invited to everyone's house again. Everyone sits together at wedding tables again. And yet, I think that couple that got insulted never forgot. They didn't, no one, not angry, we, you know, but they remembered, but they did that. They had it in themselves to do that to us. And so though, even though we forgive, the slate is clean, but the relationship is not what it was. And it never will be. Because you can forgive, but some, and you should forgive, but sometimes you, you remember. Yo, that tinge of what they did. Ray, look at this madrash now. Let's look at it with these eyes. Tammuz, Av, and Elul. We were, we were in sin. We had done Chet Egel. God was angry at us. And justifiably so. And he canceled the holidays. Sorry. I wanted to have a holiday with you every month. Cannot be. But B'nai Yisrael asked for forgiveness. And they daven. And Moshe Rabbeinu goes back up to Har Sinai and davens for them. And they're forgiven. And there's payback. You missed three holidays. Let's make it up. Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot. And that would have been fine. Everything's all made up. Ready though. Here's what Shemini Atzeret is thinking. Says here, Hashem said, Ah, oh, Tishrei, you paid back. We're at zero again. We're at neutral. That's fine. I'm not angry. You're not punished. Everything's okay. But Hashem says, I want to do one more. Tishrei paid back for the three missing months of sin, but we want to get back on normal track. And he gave them Shemini Atzeret. Oh. Do you know what Shemini Atzeret represents according to this medrash? It's, it's unbelievable. In our human relationships, we sometimes forgive, but we don't forget. Hashem forgets them. Hashem after Chet Egel, He forgave us. And that was Rosh Hashanah. And that was Yom Kippur. And that was Sukkot. He said it's okay. I'm not angry anymore. I don't want you to be punished anymore. Shmini Atzeret was when Hashem said, you know what? I don't just forgive. I want it to be normal again. I want it to be as it was. A hundred percent relationship. The love we originally had, let's get it back. And that's why Shmini Atzeret is such a simple, simple chav. There are no mitzvot do raita. Pesach, Sukkot, Shavuos, Rosh Hashanah, we've got all sorts of stuff that we do. There's no mitzvah on Shemini Atzeret. There's nothing special. It's just a simple back to normal. Ah, let's go back to our first theme. What is our first theme about? Our first point of Shemini Atzeret is that Shemini Atzeret is a chag where after the whole world celebrates on Sukkot, we have a special relationship with Hashem on Shemini Atzeret. 
And our second theme, and it's all linked, is that on Shmini Atzeret, with all the hullabaloo, with all of the sin and the forgiveness and all the difficulties that we face as a nation, Hashem is willing to say, you can get past it. We can go back to normal. And really then, tomorrow night, on Shmini Atzeret, maybe that's what we need to keep in mind. Not just, oh, another Chag, more chillant, more, you know, Chala, I really, more Shul, oi. That's what we think. But we shouldn't. What we really should say to ourselves is Shmini Atzeret, it's about getting into that place where our relationship with Hashem is normal. It's plain. It's simple. There's no problems. There's no issues anymore. You know what? In our own lives, I think this is just something that we should take into account in our own Ben Adam L'Chavero. So often, we, we, we get into these little, like, you know, little fights, little this, little that. Shmini Atzeret is telling us that you can go back. It's hard. We can't always be what Hashem is. But we can rebuild relationships. We can get back to normal. We can get together again with Hashem on Shmini Atzeret as normal. And it could be what it once was. One more point I want to make. The mitzvah of Sukkot is living in the sukkah. We lived together. We got back. Everything was normal. Shmini Atzeret, we leave the special sukkah. We leave the special mitzvah of our relationship with Hashem. And we invite Hashem back into the home. We eat normal meals. Everything is the same. No more lulav and etrog. Just a regular, simple chag. And really, that should be where we're heading at. And that's why Shemini Atzeret is the perfect Chag to end this season of Tishrei with. Because we shouldn't think to ourselves that every Chag is about, wow, our relationship with Hashem is about, oh my gosh, blowing the shofar and we fast in the sukkah and the arba minim and it's awesome. It's like, oh my gosh, it's an amazing thing. It can also be about just plain normal. Hashem can be in our lives not just on the amazing wild days, but on the normal days. Shmini Atzeret, we are segueing back into normal. And really, getting back to our first theme of Shmini Atzeret being the Jewish holiday, the holiday when the Jews get back to normal, really what could be more important than that for us? That for us, part of what our whole religion is about is bringing Hashem into the normal, plain, regular world. The regular world of eating and sleeping and work and school. Hashem's everywhere in that. Hashem is in the dining room and in the living room and in the kitchen. Hashem is on the ball court and Hashem is in the classroom. And we, with our mitzvot, again, bringing us all, you know, all encompassing, we can do that. Shmini Atzeret is about, again, transitioning from Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and Sukkot to the rest of the year. So let's take that idea. You know, again, it's hard. It's been a long hog season. But let's get that into our minds that this is our last chance to solidify that relationship and bring it into the normal, real world. Our last chance, as it said, that last party between the king and his beloved Let's just eat a little of it together, a little meat, a little fish, a little vegetables, whatever it is, and make our way into the rest of the year. As we begin, you know, again, everyone's anxious. Right after Shemini Sarah, we're going to start classes again. We're going to really get back to normal. Let's use this to segue right back into the normal, plain, wonderful, special, spiritual rest of the year. Five, seven, eight.